Next time, I'm going to be asking how you make a film out of an unfilmable novel. Let's do this. Hello, I'm the Grub Street Lodger, and some time ago I asked, how do you make a film out of an unfilmable novel. What I forgot to ask was how do you make a review of a film about an unfilmable novel. This is my attempt to show you. I don't know how interesting a black screen is going to be for an audience. So, let's look at the book. It is The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy Gentleman by Lawrence Stone. Lawrence Stone was a small time vicar in Yorkshire and he had TB and he was dying, so he started writing. He published the first two volumes of this himself with his own money because nobody else would take it, it was too weird. But that weirdness took off and people loved it and over the next seven years he wrote nine volumes of this book before dying. Why is it unfilmable? Well, for a start, as I said, he died while he was writing it. Now the mystery of Edward Drood, which was written by Charles Dickens, he died in the middle of that. And people know it's not finished. The mystery hasn't been solved. This book, the author dies in the middle of it, and there's an argument about whether it's actually finished or not. Quite a few people say it actually is. That's how weird it is. It is a nail-biting, finger-gnawingly irritating work. It's also quite brilliant. What it is, is Tristram Shandy is trying to tell his life story. Life is chaotic, it's amorphous. No matter how hard you try, you can't actually make it fit any shape. He gets distracted by the things that happened before he was born. He gets distracted by the things that affected the things that happened before he was born. He gets distracted by the stories that were being told by the people in the things that happened before the things before he was born. As he says, digression is the soul of literature. And there's a lot of digression in this. He's conceived in the first chapter. He's not born till the fourth. Though he does appear sometimes in the second and third. And then the whole last bit ends up being about his uncle. It's just peculiar. But it's also wonderful. Because for me what makes a good book is if the world view and, and the point of the book is backed up by the kind of book it is. And the world view of this book is that life is made up of flotsam and jetsam, it's made up of different people, different obsessions, different stories and it, it's just an accumulation. It, it's like a raindrop going down a uh, window, it just gathers more water droplets together until woof, there's your life. How do you make a film of that? Well, in one sense you don't. Is there anything we can do about it? Um, You're right. Yeah. This book 
is a book about writing a book. The film is kind of a film about making a film. The very first part of it is a Tristram Shandy film as you would imagine someone might make a Tristram Shandy film. It starts off with a Groucho Marx quote, it has lots of you know traditionally heritage -y kind of music in, it has some nice costumes, it has a small set um, and the people do kind of the actions of the book in the right order unlike the book. But then it pulls out and you learn a lot more about the actors and the filmmakers and the film itself. The film's not going very well. They have a battle scene, which is rubbish. They have no real story in which to hang their thing on. They don't really know how to make this film they're making. In many ways, the film itself digresses much like the book does. So you have the film of the film, the making of the film of the film, and then the backstage of the making of the film of the film, where they just chat about things. I've got a little kind of crevice. Can you see that there? You see? Yes. That's fizzy drinks. Yeah. And I don't think the colour is great. What do you think? Have a look at the colour. I, I saw the colour the last time I looked. It registered. Well, it's what I call not white. Well, What colour would you call it? I would... I'd concur with not white. I'd go further. I mean, it's not yellow. <sighs> I... You know, I mean, it's a sliding scale, isn't there, you know? I think yeah. you... I think you're, uh... Yeah, Hint of yellow. I think you're closer to... Barley meadow. If you want to give it a Dulux... Uh, Tuscan sunset. If you want to, if you... <laughs> you're getting laughs, but it's not making your teeth look any better. <laughs> you know, it's a... Pub ceiling. Another important part of the book uh, is hobby horses. This is a notion that every single person has a number of hobby horses that they ride, that is their obsessions. Maybe one of mine may well be the 18th century. Who knows? But uh, in the book, Tristram's hobby horse is to record his own life in accurate detail, no matter how uh, digressive and then kind of inaccurate it becomes in doing so. His father's is to have a really rigid, ordered system for life. His um, uncle's is all about sieges and siege weapons. His uncle's servant is all about uh, speaking eloquently. And so in the film everyone has their own hobby horses. The Steve Coogan characters are obsessed with his shoes and his status. The Rob Bryan characters are obsessed with making everyone happy and amused. There's a runner and she is obsessed with films. And what is funny about the film is that nobody in the film is at all interested in films. <laughs> But Gillian Anderson is an American film star. Oh, I think actually she's Canadian. We'd make it a real movie if we had a real star. In the previous two ones of these, I've been looking at how uh, making a film changes a book and changes the audience for a book. What's interesting about this is it, it's the same audience. It, it needs a, a limbo audience who are happy to play with it. So they have to play with the book or play with the film in order to come up with all the things that they want to come up with. Uh, I mean, ultimately, what is the point of it? Why do we want to spend a year of our lives making this film? Is it funny? Is that all? Is that not enough? I think it's funny. I think the book's funny too. They're not easy. The film's slightly easier than the book, but they're not easy. But I do recommend you try them out because there's very, very little else like it. I'm a grown man talking to the camera in a fucking womb. This review tied my brain in knots. But Tristram Shandy, luckily, has something about that. It has a curse for people that tied knots. Here we go. May he be damned for tying these knots. We excommunicate and athematize him from the thresholds of the Holy Church of God Almighty. We sequester him 
and that he may be tormented, disposed, and delivered over with Dathan and Eberiam. And that those who say unto the Lord God, Depart from us, we desire none of thy ways. And as fire is quenched with water, so let the light of him be out of forevermore, unless it shall repent him and make satisfaction. Amen. May the Father who created man curse him, may the Son who suffered for us curse him, may the Holy Ghost who is given up to us in baptism curse him, may the Holy Cross which Christ for our salvation from him over his enemies ascended curse him. St. John the Precursor, St. John the Baptist, and St. Peter, and St. Paul, and St. Andrew, and all the other together curse him, and may the rest of his disciples and four evangelists, who by their preaching and virtue, the universal world, and may the holy and wonderful company of martyrs and confessors, who by their holy works are found pleasing to God Almighty, curse him. Jupiter and of Juno, and by the beards of the rest of the heathen worships, which by the by were no small number. Since what with the beards of your celestial gods and gods aerial and aquatic, to say nothing of the beards of town gods and country gods and celestial goddesses of their wives, or the infernal goddesses, your whores and concubines, that is in the case they wore them, all of which beards, as Barrow tells me, upon honour and word were mustered up together, make no less than 30,000 effective beards upon the pagan establishments. Every beard of which is paying right and privilege has been swept in form by all these beards together, then I bound protest that by the two bad cassettes I am worth in the world, I would have given the better than the three years I have sick and I'm not prepared. I stood by cursing and my heaven and what power and movement and my heaven against the two and down and the pagan establishments of the Amen. So be it. Amen. You know, for a famously unadaptable work I have three different types of Tristram Shandy that all sort of present it differently I have Tristram Shandy the graphic novel and I've seen a one-man show of it so there must be something people can adapt Fire Alarm what about, what about the chestnut scene? Do you remember when you asked us to finance the movie, you acted out a scene where you dropped a hot chestnut down your trousers? <laughs> I mean, that's why we gave you the money. Uh... <laughs> well, well, I thought, yeah. It's yeah, great. no, it, except it, it's Fun. not Walter who does it, is it? I mean, it won't be Steve doing it in the film. What, wait, hang on, Joe, are you serious? It didn't matter, though, because it was just a... Fucking hell, I've been practising that for weeks. First, I tried to keep it small. Uh... Then I pushed the idea of him struggling to control the pain. Uh, then I just went for lots of energy. Oh, that looks too contrived, that. Mm. Do you want to try it with a yeah, real let's chest? Try, try it with the real one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, experiment, see if the rea genuine reaction. Okay. Okay. Gee, man, ah, ah, fuck! Shit! You put. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. Fuck you know, huh? I know. I'm very sorry. It's, you know, same for dinner first. You know? <laughs> Fuck. Sorry. Oh. So that's your lot. I hope some of it made sense. Next time, I'm going to look at how you film an unadaptable novel. Again. Gotta work better than this time, innit? Yeah.